आदित्य मंजरी हर्षल मुस्कान कीर्ति भूषण बिनी भूषण डाले ट्वाइस ओ इज वेरी हैप्पी विथ मी ऋतुजा गुड मॉर्निंग आचल गुड मॉर्निंग भूषण कम्स वन अगेन गाइज ओके इज नॉट विशिंग मी इज मिसिंग अदर स्वरदा गुड मॉर्निंग साहिल गुड मॉर्निंग आचल कम्स अगेन आई सपोज आशुतोष राधिका वर्से पाटिल गुड मॉर्निंग शीतल गुड मॉर्निंग तेजस गुड मॉर्निंग प्राची गौतम मयूरेश रसिका रसिका गुड मॉर्निंग हर्षल पाटिल अगेन ओम पाटिल ओम पाटिल यस गौरव गुड मॉर्निंग ओके दीज वर पोस्टेड गुड मॉर्निंग फॉर मी नाउ बिफोर वी गो इन टू वट वी सपोज टू बी डूइंग फ्यू क्वेरीज दैट आई पिक्ट अप फ्रॉम लास्ट टाइम एज फार एज दैट एस्पेक्ट इज कंसर्न आशुतोष चंदे लास्ट मी लास्ट टाइम सर एनी चांसेस ऑफ आर college reopening next month uh, uh, let me tell you that uh, uh, going by the geography of what is happening with corona <clears throat> we would be uh, waiting to see what is uh, what are the chances basically because uh, diwali being a festive season we yet don't know what is going to happen as far as the uh, say the corona expanse is concerned uh, but next month i don't feel so Okay, uh, it's only after Diwali, so it's, it's say probably somewhere after twentieth of November that we should uh, think of that uh, happening. So that is one thing. Then uh, uh, another question that I was asked is, uh, sir, will you please explain? Akshata Joshi was asking last time. Uh, extent and location again. <clears throat> I don't know. I feel I have explained it, but. probably i have explained it with uh, the um ba students now as far as extent and location is concerned uh, extent is basically a zoom in into location location is as i said a criss cross point of uh, the longitude and the latitude the right place at which so i if you remember i did say again that uh, if i'm looking for pune on a world map then it will be a dot and that is going to be the location if i am looking for pune in the map of district pune okay or or as a matter of fact uh, maharashtra also on a very broad map as such i would be taking the westernmost point the easternmost point the northernmost point the southernmost points and instead of having one criss cross point i am going to have four points so the latitudinal extent is going to be from so many latitudes uh, north of course the whole of it is in the northern hemisphere to so much of latitude north so this is the latitudinal extent and from so much longitudes east we are in the east to so much of latitudes in the east so the extent of pune city is going to be uh, presented that way okay so uh, it's 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 best basically a scale okay so location is a pinpoint location extent is uh, basically the same thing when you expand it when you zoom into it you have a larger area showing the same place and uh, then you consider the extent of that particular uh, uh, place as such so that was uh, i hope that gets you the point and uh, uh, then maitri patel was asking sir can you explain last theme that's regions okay uh, in fact i was planning to revise it again i was uh, sure that uh, there would be some issues with that but uh, no no problems we are going to go into the revising aspect of that as well 
uh, eight more comments since we logged into this. I'll, I'll just help these. This is Prathamesh wishing us good morning. Pranav, Mayur, Viraj, and uh, Ishwari. Sandesh, Suharsh, Saurabh is the last person. Okay. Uh, let us move ahead with our regular business and uh, let us just share the screen now. Um, as far as sharing screen is concerned, I am supposed to be sharing the screen, right? Um, I don't know what problem I am having. Just let me see if uh, I can uh, check into what we have. Oh, yes, I am a bit caught up with these things. Anyway, I will put it up in a moment. Screen, taskbar, and uh, here we come. So, <clears throat> these are the five themes, right? We were speaking about. The first one, the first thing that we do in geography is uh, identifying a location. And uh, when I go deeper into the location, it shifts into a place. And uh, because the place has a larger uh, expanse on scale, let me tell you that Pune in location will not be different uh, as far as per, a place, uh, uh, the place, uh, sorry, the location of Pune is not going to be much different as far as the uh, Pune as a place. But it's only that when I'm looking at Pune location, I'm going to, uh, I've taken a whole a world map and uh, there I'm seeing Pune just as a point. So it's it's just an X and Y axis. That's the latitude, longitude axis. And uh, that's the location for me. Okay, But then, as I said, if I'm looking for Pune city in Pune district, I have a larger map and then I've zoomed into Pune. And as a consequence, what has happened now is that the place Pune is in front of me, and I see that there are natural aspects to Pune. You have the Mula or and the Mutha rivers passing through Pune, so that's the natural aspect. And you have the whole uh, city of Pune, which has uh, extended on the sides of the banks of the Mula and Mutha, and otherwise also. Uh, you have the Bund Garden, which is a human characteristic. You have the river, as I've already said, which is a natural characteristic, and uh, it's it's uh, that in fact leads us to the third. Uh, theme that's the human environment uh, action and reaction. I would uh, I would say. Uh, so how do people impact the environment? How does the environment impact the people, and how do they blend into each other, uh, in, say simultaneously? So that's that's the third aspect. The fourth aspect we uh, spoke about was uh, um, the, the 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 movement and movement in every sense the movement in natural sense the movement in human sense uh, movement in the virtual sense as such I did say the other day also that uh, data is passing in from one point to other and we can hardly see the data but you can see it at an end point using a gazette it could be a, a mobile phone that you are using or it could be a, a laptop screen which go, which you could possibly be putting into use. And then we come to the last point, and that is a region. What exactly uh, does a region mean? Somebody, I did mention this in the comments that somebody was asking to explain the region aspect as such. Now, what exactly does a, 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 a region mean? And what is, what is the difference between a place and a region now? Okay, so you'll see that from location, which is at a very minute scale to place, that you, you, you zoom into and the place now develops into a region. Now, I will see that as far as place is concerned, it is it is a term which is used more in, in the human sense and uh, regions are normally used in the natural sense. I'll give you an example of that. Okay, when you speak about climatic regions, for example, you must have studied this in any earlier classes. You used to say that, okay, the equatorial region. You don't say the equatorial place. You say the desert regions, okay, the savanna regions, the taiga regions, the tundra region. You don't say tundra place. You don't say the taiga place. You don't say the savanna grass. Then you, you say the monsoon region. You don't say the monsoon place. So it's a matter of scale and how you are adjusting the zoom in and zoom out. If you if you if you're going to go into the details 
a small or smaller smaller uh, 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 an object is going to be placed or a smaller location is going to be a place you, you a larger thing is going to be region but that's not the only explanation for a region uh, i would i would bring you back to what we said about equator the equatorial region is one climatic region why do we call it as an equatorial region basically because it has its own set of climatic fact features say for example the maximum minimum temperatures are defined for the equatorial region of course there is a spectrum but normally they don't fall below and they don't rise above then there is a behavior which rainfall a pattern which rainfall follows in the equatorial region and that's exclusively for the equatorial region okay there are peculiar types of trees which grow in that particular region they grow very dense okay the style in which the rain falls is going to be very heavy so all these are characteristic features of that particular area and that is why it is called as an equatorial region similarly uh, when you come to the monsoon region same thing the summer temperatures the winter temperatures are different the daily highest temperature and lowest temperatures are in a particular band the style of rainfall that it falls for 4 to 5 months instead of what we saw in the equatorial region that it literally falls every other day half the year more than half the year i would rather say so these are characteristic features of that particular area that particular place i we won't be calling it as a place because i said that when i discuss a place it's going to be very small okay so uh, say say in the human sense of it when somebody asks you that where do you stay so you you say that uh, which place do you say they they don't ask you uh, which uh, uh, which which region do you stay okay or uh, on the other hand you put it you put the whole scenario on a very broader scale saying that uh, you you are uh, you go for you, you go into uh, the oxford university for your higher studies let us assume and you have students coming from different parts of the world now see how the scale has changed okay you have gone to oxford and 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 you have a class which has people from the whole, all parts of the uh, uh, world and then the teacher walks in and uh, he or she asks that okay guys tell me from which region of the world which part of the world do you come from so they don't ask you uh, which which place do you come from they ask you which region do you come from which part of the world you come from so these are different connotations and as a geographer let me tell you we need to understand this in a better way okay the more better you understand the right words you would be using and the choice of right words and use of right words makes your uh, delivery of 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 a communication uh, very very uh, i would say interesting and 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 uh, i would say uh, very qualitative also as such. so uh, moving beyond these five themes of geography uh, again i don't know whether uh, we did this uh, i don't think so we did this last time but anyway it uh, it it requires a revision because uh, the last time i discussed this if i have uh, it could have had a, a bit of difficulty last time so um, instead of having a, a, a an artificial compass how do you make the 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 environment around you itself a natural compass so uh, you'll have to read through what is written towards the left side of the screen and follow it in the diagram that's towards the right side of your screen uh, place a stick of 90 cm now i think there was a question from one some student that why is it 90 possibly it was a fyba student why is it that the length of the stick is uh, uh, 90 i would rather say uh, i i did not have an answer for that but uh, Uh, i have i have posted this question further from where this post came in and uh, they are due to give me an some answer uh, i personally feel there is no uh, specific region uh, reason for it uh, possibly the angle between the ground and the stick is 90 so a conventional way of putting the stick of 90 cm also uh, easy to measure but then in that case even 1 meter could be easy to measure but that's not what we are looking for here we are looking for the direction i am lost at a place you can see this guy here in the photograph that he doesn't have any human locations around him all everything seems so natural and uh, he is lost for direction and he has to look for direction what does he do he takes a stick and he puts it into the ground uh, uh, and 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 uh, uh, the the point at which 
the shadow of this particular stick falls, he's going to place a small stone. Now, why stone? Obviously, you don't have anything else around you. So you fetch a stone from somewhere and then you put it there. Then you wait for 15 to 20 minutes and then you pick up another stone and you, you put that particular stone uh, to the point where the shadow has now moved in those 15 minutes. So now you have two points, points, uh, the initial point, let us call it A, and the next point that is, let us call it uh, B. Now, uh, a, a misnormer that developed when I was speaking about this in the FYBA class, uh, which I need to clear here, that uh, the sun that is seen here is not going to come up. Okay, so the, please, please remember that the sun, you have to assume that the sun is not moving this way. Okay. As you can see it in front of you, it is not going to come towards you and then it's going to cross you. In fact, it is going to cross sideways. Now, why does this happen? Uh, and, and, and how is this particular explanation put up there? It is uh, it is assumed that this person you can see here is somewhere in the mid latitude. So uh, the moment you cross 23 and a half degrees latitude in the northern or the southern hemisphere towards the poles, uh, what happens is uh, that you uh, the sun will not be overhead. So it will move like this in front of you, particularly in winter, it will move like this. So you have it at a particular point and it is casting a shadow at a particular point. Then after 15 minutes, it's going to move and then the shadow is also going to move. But you'll see that the shadow, the sun, if the sun moves this way, the shadow will move this way. So the first point you had placed a stone here, the second point of the sun, you'll have to place a stone here. So this is point A and this is point B. Now, point A is the east and the point B is the west. You draw an arrow. Point A is east and point B is the west. See, these are natural ways how geographers used to do all these things without gadgets at, say, in, in, in ancient times or in medieval times as well. Now you have a line which shows you east and west. Now what do you do? Now, place the tip of your left foot. Okay, Your left foot, you have to imagine you are doing this instead of this guy in front of you doing it. What do you do? You place the tip of the left foot on point A, the first rock, and then the right foot on the second rock, tip of the right foot on the second rock, that is point B. Now you would say, why tip of the foot? Why don't, why don't you stand? Uh, you may lose your balance. And that's why just place the uh, tip. Now you have your left foot on the first point and your right foot on the second point. The direction in which you face you are facing, placing your uh, feet on left and right as such. You are facing the north and the direction towards your back is the south. Okay, So you start with point A, you wait for the shadow to travel, you mark point B, you draw line point A to point B, point A is your east, point B is your west. Put your left foot on point A, put your right foot on point B. Okay. You, you are now facing the northern direction, south close to your back. So you can just draw the square there itself and you can write east and you can write west and you can write north and you can write south. Okay, so that is how uh, this is uh, done. And you'll see that uh, anywhere on the earth, okay, the, the first shadow mark is going to be your west, uh, uh, is, 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 is your uh, first shadow mark is going to be the uh, east, sorry, and the second point is going to be your best. Okay? That is how the, the last sentence I think needs to be uh, corrected. So this is the natural compass. And uh, now let us move ahead. Now, uh, we have seen the five themes of geography. And uh, what else do we have in geography? You see that geography, we the other day described it or defined it as anything and everything on the surface of the earth under the influence of the sun. Of course, this could lead to discussion, then what happens to the side which is not facing the sun. It's it's just a phrase used that everything that is under the sun at any, any point of time is, is uh, the scope for geography. Uh, if, you, if you zoom into this definition, what do I get? Uh, you'll see that for quite some time. Now, we have to understand this diagram step by step. <clears throat> You'll see a combination of four spheres towards the center of the diagram. And then you have one more sphere, which is placed towards the left-hand corner of your diagram as such. 
Now remember how man grew into understanding geography. Uh, <clears throat> if you remember, I'll just check if we have done this. Yeah. If you remember, we spoke about Eratosthenes and uh, the world map Eratosthenes speaks for. See, this is funny. Of course, this is a period 2200 years ago. That's 2200 years ago. But it's funny that when Eratosthenes speaks about the world map, his uh, major world map encompasses the land part more. Okay, and of course he is he is oblivious of the fact that uh, there is so there are so many other regions of the world. It's 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 the limit to which he has been, and thus he draws the map. But remember that that map was whatever he drew was very precise. The naming of the map may have been a bit difficult, but whatever he drew of the map, it was uh, so very interesting uh, for, for us even today. And there is where the whole thing about how geography and its scope has increased. If you, if you think about what Eratosthenes was thinking at that particular point of time, he was thinking of land only. So you'll see that the initial sphere that geographers started studying about is uh, this thing here, the right hand bottom corner, the lithosphere. Man was initially studying only the land aspect. But then over a period of time, when he started understanding land to quite an extent, he thought that uh, this is not working because the processes which are operating on the land are dominated by water. And not all water on the land is enough for all these processes. This is provided by something else. And this is basically the precipitation, the rain. Then he tried to trace where the rain comes from. He saw that the rain comes from the clouds. Where do the clouds come from? They came from some, some distant place. And he tried to go, travel to that particular distance place. Eventually, he was he came to a uh, coastline. And then he saw this huge expanse of uh, water, what we call as ish, uh, oceans today, oceans and seas today. So uh, the fact that all this water that was falling in the form of rain came from oceans required human beings to understand the oceans also. So the scope of geography grew. He was not only studying the lithosphere now, he was required to study the hydrosphere also, which included different types of waters in the sense fresh water, uh, saline water, and uh, so fresh water on the surface and saline water, of course, in the uh, um, oceans, the marine waters. But uh, over the period of time, they started understanding land, they understood water more. But uh, something was still missing. And that was basically what was carrying this water. Okay, this water was evaporating into water vapor. And then it was moving in the form of cloud in, 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 in the sky. And then they thought of adding that aspect also. And that is how the third aspect came into being. And that's the atmosphere. Now, if you look into the science of this, land is solid, water is liquid. And air is uh, air is the gaseous part of it. So here comes the physics or chemistry, whatever you would call it, the, the mass of it, the solid, liquid. It's the whole equation of solid, liquid, and gas and the interactions between them. So what we understood as a simple relationship between human and environment is now into, we are now into the science of it. We are understanding the solid part of the earth. We are trying to understand the liquid part of the earth. And we are trying to understand the gaseous part which covers the earth and which is called as the atmosphere. He gradually understood that it is the combination of these three spheres which gives rise to the fourth sphere and that is the biosphere. The living world and the living world students of biology uh, respectively into zoology and botany will know that uh, the living world is further divided into the plant kingdom which emerged first followed by the animal kingdom which is completely dependent on the uh, plant kingdom and so on and so forth. And uh, for a considerable period of science revolution, we kept on uh, understanding the whole earth and the study of earth placed around these th uh, four spheres. To start with the lithosphere, then we added the hydrosphere to it, uh, followed by adding of the atmosphere to it. And then we had this beautiful uh, triangle of these three spheres. And then we saw that the interaction of these three spheres gave you the fourth sphere, which was basically a part which had its part in each of them. You had plants and animals on land. You had plants and animals in water. And whether you have plants and animals in air, yes, corona is all around us. Now, whether we call uh, 
the virus of corona as a living being that's something that we leave to the scientists to, to discuss but the very fact that they travel in air means that you have uh, the 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 atmospheric constituent to the biosphere also and more so the biosphere if if i want to uh, uh, connect the biosphere and the atmosphere um, the the biosphere that's land as uh, sorry that's that's the animals as well as the plants are uh, seriously dependent on uh, their respiration for uh, from from the air and that's that's the major constituent of the atmosphere so that is the interaction between all these three and in geography we try to put all of them together and try to understand it on a larger scale now if that explains everything why is that uh, that that that, that uh, the circle the sphere towards the upper left hand corner of your uh, uh, slide if you watch it carefully that's all ice and then what has ice have to play or what does ice as, uh, as 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 a substance have a role to play in 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 geography you see that for a considerable period of time in geography the study of geography involved these four spheres lithosphere hydrosphere atmosphere and the biosphere it is only recently that we have realized that there are so many other things that do influence the impact its impact on lithosphere hydrosphere and atmosphere and eventually on biosphere and this being a theme we had to go into the details of that and that is why 2006 uh, oceanographers and geographers sat together and they said that uh, we should have a new ocean now uh, the common man would have been aghast that how is it that uh, without anything happening seriously we need to have a new ocean they said the explanation to this was the waters around the Antarctic continent are, are so very cold and they so very have their own system as such that we need to identify and classify it as a separate ocean. No new ocean is formed, but we have to carve out a new ocean from the already existing ocean. So the southern part of the Indian Ocean, the southern part of the Atlantic Ocean and the southern part of the Pacific Ocean. Now southern part, water, how do you separate? You separate it this way? No. Okay. Uh, you'll see that physics tells us that these cold waters have an extent. The impact of Antarctica on the waters around it is going to have an extent. Till where does this extent go? Let us see. So they said that, okay, let us take 60 degrees south latitude as a limit. Now we know that the uh, 60 degrees south latitude is imaginary. And uh, it's, it's all those waters from 60 degrees as you walk towards the poles. But of course, at the pole, you have the Antarctic continent. So the coasts of the Antarctic continent and 60 degrees latitude. All these waters were seen to be very cold. Now, it is not that at 59 degrees, the waters were very hot or warm and 60 degrees, it's suddenly. But you have to identify some place of transition. So they said, let us let it be around 60 degrees. And uh, they said that these waters are, are, are colder as compared to others and they run and move. Okay, they circulate, I would rather be using this word, in, in its own fashion. Now, all this science part of, uh, say, learning things, learning life, learning land, learning water, learning air at very cold temperatures is called as cryogenics. Cryogenics, very low temperatures, below freezing point. It could be minus 5 and minus 10 and minus 20, minus 30, minus 40. Okay, so we need to understand that. Okay, and, and, and this coldness is having its impact on all these four other spheres also. So though today we may not be putting that into this, this build-up that we have towards the right side, probably 10 years down the line, probably two decades down the line, three decades down the line, uh, cryogenics could be, and, and the cryosphere as it is called, the cold sphere is called as the cryosphere. Now you have three locations, the North Pole, the South Pole, and the third pole as they call is the Himalayan complex. So. Uh, this is the cryosphere, very cold temperatures, environment in cold temperatures, and, and, and studying all this is called as cryogenics. Uh, as I said, say two decades, three decades down the line, we may possibly be living in these areas. I don't know. We still can keep our head, uh, fingers crossed, and uh, it could be dominating its impact. And at that particular point, maybe we may have altered the systems around us, the lithosphere, hydrosphere, and atmosphere too, and of course, effectively the biosphere to an extent that... Uh, we would be including this, we may have by that point of time uh, have, have pulled this and this could be somewhere touching this. It already is, 
but we are not able to directly put it together and that is why we have kept it aside we know that this has an impact but we don't have a confirmed impact as of uh, as of today and though we study these four spheres together we are placing the cryosphere very near to these four spheres gradually it will move nearer and nearer as we study more about cryogenics the cryosphere <clears throat> it will it will move nearer and nearer by the way cryogenics is uh, is is also an art of uh, generating energy at very low temperature if you read about uh, uh, the indian satellite programs the rockets that used to be launch, launched okay you see that they used to use cryogenic fuels that means the fuel is 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 giving energy at a very low temperature <clears throat> that's a part of physics let's come back to geography that this sphere is the sphere to be seen in uh, years to come let me tell you okay it's very important and it's it is having its impact and uh, in years to come we have to study this impact now we would be studying it in chemistry we could be studying it in physics we could be studying it in biology as well but remember geography reminded you of uh, getting this together and that is why geography is called as the jack of all trades that is why you have questions on geography because it encompasses so many things we are going to go into the details of that all those so many things need to be understood in geography at a layman's turn uh, uh, uh term okay i'm 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 say i'm i'm explaining chemistry at a very basic level i'm not going into the details of chemistry of the periodic table and the uh, uh say say the noble gases and and the lanthanides and what not i just forget it i've done it way back when i was in 12th standard not after that and so but you see that that is all which is out of scope of the layman who is going to explain this to the layman a geographer has to do and that is why the geographer is called as a jack of all trades he has to know basics of chemistry basics of physics basics of biology not only the science part of it the human the basics of history the basics of sociology okay the basics of psychology the basics of economics as well okay so all this is so it makes geography so very a uh, broad a subject and that's that also makes it so very interesting also uh let's move ahead and uh, let's come to this aspect Okay, the the branches of geography. Now here, partially we have already entered into the syllabus because if you see the first topic, we are actually start. We need to actually study the uh, branches of geography. Now, as far as these branches of geography are concerned, uh, let us enter into them one by one. Now, what are these? Uh, what is this one by one? Uh, let me enlarge it for you. Okay. now i want you all to focus in to the first three lines only the rest of the lines will come to them one after uh, say at at a uh, later point uh, if we finish it today fine but if not we'll come back to this point later now geography as a subject basically is divided into two groups you would say sir we are seeing three i will insist it is two groups physical geography and human geography but within human geography there is one branch which has grown significantly dominating on other branches and that is why you see that we add it to uh, within human geography then you would say then why is it a part of the of geography as well let me tell you that the economic value i was referring to the last point i said that geographers understand economics also so it's that economics which becomes so dominant that a branch of human geography comes out as economic geography okay the economics of it the money etc 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 is a human concept but you are extracting the resources from nature and that is why economic geography happens to be a branch or or it's it's parallel to physical geography also that's very interesting about it yes it is something that comes only after man comes on this particular planet but what has man done of late is that his economic geography is exploiting resources from nature and that is why nowadays we are studying economic geography uh, parallelly i still as a geographer i still don't agree uh, that it is a third branch of geography i would say it is an immediate branch of human geography it may be an immediate branch of human geography everything now what is the difference between physical geography and human geography for the so for some moment of time if if we keep economic geography separately the words themselves Uh, do explain the uh, explain it to you that uh, as far as physical geography is concerned everything that is physical what do you what 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 do you mean by physical everything that is physics 
everything that is physical, everything that is natural for the layman, everything that is natural. You remove activities of man. You can use human being as an animal here, but you don't bring him to the level of development of civilization. He has not started impacting nature. He is just a part of nature. All that is called as physical geography. Okay, so everything about nature is studied under physical geography. We are going to go into the details of what are the branches of physical geography in just a moment of time. What would human geography mean? You'll see that as man grew, okay, you'll see that he was initially walking on his four legs and then he became bipedal. Okay, his hands became free and then there was evolution. Okay. You had these fingers and you have all these different fingers and every finger had its own use. So man started uh, impacting the environment around him. And one of the most important uh, uh, gains that human beings had over other animals, okay, of course, some of the other animals do have it, but majority of the animals don't have it. Okay, you'll see that when I'm looking at you, okay, I'm looking, you can see both of my eyes, isn't it? Okay, and if we had been on a visual exchange medium, I would have seen both of your eyes. Okay, you'll see that our eyes are not like a cow. Okay, one eye here and one eye here. Or both the eyes are here. This is called as bifocal vision. Bifocal vision. Students of physics need to know this. You may be knowing this. If not, you have to know this. What is the major advantage? Yes, people say that man can walk on two uh, legs is one of the major advantage that human beings have. Uh, equally important is bifocal vision. Now, what is a bifocal vision? You'll see that uh, those who know about uh, specs, etc., uh, will know what bifocal is. You'll see that uh, if 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 you have uh, if I if I bring you down to uh, music and you see nowadays, of course, we have digital music, but then you have what is called a stereo uh, stereo music, stereophonic. Now, what is stereophonic? Okay, you'll see that uh, you have two speakers and they are placed in such a way that uh, they are, they are, they are, they are, the, the sound energy that they generate, it overlaps. Now, let us say we place one speaker here and this is the expanse to which the audio waves travel. Okay. Now, if I take another speaker and this is the uh, expanse of it, I keep it away. This is not stereophonic. This is not, this will not create a stereophonic. If I'm sitting in between them, if, if I'm located in between them here, I would, I would hear something happening, but I would not hear it in a stereophonic. Then how do I create stereophonic effect? I am going to take these two speakers and they, I'm going to move them into each other in such a way that their zones are going to overlap. Their zones are going to overlap. Now this V created, if I'm going to sit within this V, I am going to get a stereophonic impact. A stereophonic impact. Okay, so I will feel that some sound is coming from here, some sound is coming from here. Of course, today's audio technology has gone beyond that. Okay, it is digital. Now, what does digital mean? Of course, I know this is out of our scope, but these are some basic things that we need to understand in science. Okay, now a digital is basically placing uh, uh, points okay, in three dimensions. So this is the three dimensions. This is the x-axis. Let us say this is uh, this is the x-axis. This is the y-axis. And this is the Z axis. So I create a cube out of this. I create a cube out of this. And I have points marked on X, Y, and Z. So an intersection of X, Y, and Z is going to give me a location, a point, a value. Okay, That X, so much units, Y, so much units, and Z, so much units. The intersection is that particular point of time. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place sounds within that cube. I'm going to place sounds within that cube at various locations. And then what I do is I place my head into that cube. Getting it. I place my head into that particular cube. I switch on the uh, sound. Now, what have I done? At a particular point X, Y, Z, I have put the sound of a helicopter. At a particular point X, Y, Z, I have put the sound of a, 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 a river flowing. At a particular point X, Y, Z, I have put a sound of a of, of, uh, 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 cow who is moving, mo mowing very loudly. And at particular point X, Y, Z, I have put a sound where somebody is calling out, a human being is calling out someone. When I'm going to play this as a digital sound and I hear this, okay, you get this impact when you use this uh, 
uh, uh, earbuds. You must have noticed that digital now. So you see that the sound of the helicopter comes from this side. Okay, of course it's all in your brain here, but then that is how digital effects are created. Okay, it comes from here. I said the river sound will come. You will feel that the river is blowing from here, flowing from here. Sorry. Then you have a cow which is moving from here, and then you have a, a human being who is calling out to someone here, and that gives you a very fantastic effect. That's that's called as a digital effect. So that is as far as uh, uh, human beings are concerned. But going back to the bifocal thing, okay. Now you see that the same thing, the stereophonic effect. Instead of sounds here, I am going to keep my eyes here. These locations are my these eyes now for majority of the animals like a cow as i said the focus is this way so they can't see what is happening in front of them but for primates primates basically means zoology students will know primate is the family of apes okay for primates it is bifocal so our vision is stereophonic vision our vision is stereophonic vision and you'll see that major of our vision which is now what does this stereophonic mean to us in eyes and head <coughs> i am able to see three dimension the distance to which the camera is from me the distance to which the keyboard is from me is is all decided by this v and not this and if you think i'm 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 i'm, I'm not explaining this in the right way a simple experiment you can do for yourself is uh, you turn your eyes to a uh, to one corner say your right corner and uh, then try to fetch you keep a pencil there and uh, you just look at it like this and try to fetch it it's not easy to fetch that basically because when you are looking at this point it is beyond the scope of the v and you lose the two di three dimensional aspect how deep how far how near okay all this comes because of all to all the objects which lie in this thing all the objects which are beyond the v you will you will not be able to gauge you try to touch things you move your eye, eyes to uh, eyeballs to one corner here or one absolute corner here and try to fetch something it's difficult you may be able to do it but it's difficult and you'll see that this is how okay man was able to use his uh, information further and in fact and in fact you'll see that if you have seen small kids okay those those kids who has who, who have started to uh, walk Okay, say one and a half years or two years as such, they are walking. And uh, uh, let me tell you that uh, technically, biologically, instead of using the word technically, let me say biologically, small kids don't have this perception because this has to be learned as you grow. You tend to know what is happening around you because of you try to, you start using this more rather than this. When you start using this more, you can gauge the depth. Okay. And that is why you'll see that when small kids are, you are playing with small kids, you throw a ball to them, they don't know what speed it is coming to, what distance it is traveling. And, and that is why invariably small kids are missing it out. And why is it that cricketers catch it? Because they are old enough and they know the distance from which the, the ball is coming, the speed at which the ball is coming and so they can feel it and they can throw it again. Okay, When they're throwing it to the wicket keeper in, the, uh, in a cricket match, he again has a sense of three dimension. Okay. Now imagine if I'm looking at the wicket keeper like this and try to throw the ball like this, I, the ball will go somewhere else and the wicket keeper is standing somewhere else. That's going to be the funny thing that would happen. And you'll see that. And, and that is why in the process of evolution, man realized the importance of this V. And the moment he, he realized the importance of this V, he was able to grow. Another aspect, now since we are into that biological aspect of uh, human physiology, let me also say, from walking on two legs to having a bifocal. And the third most important thing is this thing here, inside here, the brain. Okay, If you have had a chance to see a newborn baby, okay, we have these coming up in our families around. If you have visited these uh, maternity homes with your family and if you have seen a newborn baby, next time you go, try to see the proportionate size of the head the body that's the abdomen and the leg okay the head size is one third of the size of that particular uh, small baby that infant that baby okay if you see other animals it is not that way if you see a kid goat being born freshly the head size is small the body is large okay a cow a calf being born to a cow the head size is small 
It's human beings where the brain size at birth is one third the size of its body. And that gave a lot of space for us to think beyond. That is how we developed language. We are speaking, we are communicating. Okay, we can fight, we can abuse. At the same time, we can come down to terms. We have peace, we have agreements. So all this is because this, mo see most of the other animals use their brain for feeding and reproduction, growth, feeding and reproduction. We have gone beyond that. Okay, We have had a huge human environment around us. And in that process, in the development of this human process, we came up with a means of exchange and that is currency. We started giving values to resources that gold is costly, coal is not that costly, but it has its own values as such. So dealing with these values required economic geography. And that is why economic geography has its own uh, uh, importance as such. I hope you have understood the growth from understanding physical geography to human geography and the importance of economic geography in human geography uh, as such. Anyway. Let us go back to uh, the natural aspect because there is where we start with geography as such. We come to physical geography. What is physical geography? Your paper one, by the way, your paper one, semester one is going to be this first thing, geomorphology. Your paper two, oh, sorry, paper one in semester two is going to be climatology and oceanography. So I am going to teach you everything in natural aspect, physical geography. Professor Tigre is going to speak to you about the other aspects, the human geography, and we're going to go to that. Uh, probably we may not be able to go to that particular point today. But then geomorphology, climatology, oceanography, biogeography, in that you have phytogeography and zoogeography. And don't you think this resembles something that we have all just done? And what was that? Okay, it is this. Okay, you see that this, the land part is geomorphology. The water part is oceanography. The atmosphere part is climatology. And of course, the biogeography is the biosphere. Okay, so very interesting. And now it is so very easy to link them into each other, isn't it? So that's the, say, say the interesting part about geography. Now, what is geomorphology? Now, geomorphology is a subject which is common to geology and geography both. What do we study? We study the configuration of the surface, landforms. Okay, study the materials constituting the Earth's crust. And in fact, we go inside also. And the processes and forces in the Earth's core. Okay, so what is happening to the land from the interior of the Earth? What is happening to the land from the exterior of the Earth? And you must have learned this as endogenetic forces and exogenetic or endogenic and exogenic forces of uh, affecting the earth in your school days. If not, we are going to do it. Don't have any doubts about uh, not able to understand it. It's my responsibility to make you understand these things. Then second branch of physical geography is climatology. Now you said that if oceans, you would ask a question that if oceans are so important, why is it that climatology comes second? It's basically climatology, though we don't see the air around us, it's more important. You see that without food, you can go for, say, a couple of weeks. Without water, you can go on for, uh, uh, for three, four, five days or even a week. Okay, But without air, it's just a matter of some minutes that you would die. The climate is important to that particular extent. Then your question would be, why is it that geomorphology that we did first? Geomorphology, the, the standing of human being is on land and that is why you know, this is first and then we go to climatology or it's also called as meteorology. Meteorology, it's the study of the atmosphere. And, 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 and next time we're going to study the composition of the atmosphere, the structure of the atmosphere, the lower part of the atmosphere, the troposphere, what happens in that, okay? What is temperature? What is day? What is night? All this is going to be very interesting uh, to be understood. In, in climatology and the, the, so the next part within that next semester paper one is oceanography of course the configuration of the oceans and what all is what what all it is about and then something that i would leave geography leaves for biology to attend is biogeography yes we have a subject sub subject called as biogeography but we don't go into much details of that 
okay uh, you have uh, the botany part of it is phytogeography the zoology part of it is zoo geography and 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 at some point of time i have this beautiful story about climatic regions of the world and in that when we speak about the savanna regions why is it that you have the giraffe in the savanna grasslands why is it that uh, you have the hippopotamus in the equatorial region okay i don't i don't think uh, botany and zoology teaches you that they give you the phyla they give you the species they give you the name they give you the parallel animals here and there what they eat what they don't eat the style of the leaves and 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 the nose size etc all is done but how do you link it to the world geography comes in to help you to link it to the world why is it that you have tall trees in equatorial region why is it that you hardly have trees in the desert region you put all of these together in physical geography to make you understand and making sense out of geography as such so these are the major branches now something which is abstract not related to this but something which is abstract is also done in this you see that map making is a part of cartography as it is called is a part of uh, physical geography then some geographers say that uh, 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 say the soil geography is also a part of physical geography others say that no soil geography should not be included here uh, there are various uh, um, dis difference of opinions but uh, for us we can keep this Okay, so if there is a question as to sub branches of physical geography, these are the major sub branches. You have to write a couple of sentences of each of this as to what it is, and let me tell you, explanation of all of this can be found on Google. We are on a very superficial level, but it's very necessary so that we put all of this together in such a way that this net, when we see it as geography, we understand what is happening with geography and what is happening around us in geography as such. So that is as far as uh, uh, parts of physical geography is concerned. I could have gone into human geography, but I'm not going to go because uh, I will keep some time for question answers. Now I'm coming out of this uh, screen sharing right now and uh, uh, we can, uh, yes, I see a few. Oh, so please repeat the moment point. Now, what this was 942. That means uh, just when we started it, I am not able to understand what that was. Uh, let us see. Then at 1020, that's just a few moments ago. Radhika says, sir, will you please zoom the image? Uh, that's the maximum I could zoom for you all. Uh, I will do one thing. I'll pass this PPT into the group at some point of time. So you can use it at that particular point of time. And frankly speaking, the image is not that clear. And that's why zooming should not help you much, Radhika. So uh, that is about uh, uh, it. And uh, for a couple of seconds from now, let me wait for uh, some questions that you have for the day. If you have questions, you can just type them down in the comments. If not, uh, I will call it. Yeah, so... Uh, Atharva today says that, sir, reading CAE Oxford Aviation Academy's book for meteorology, helpful. Uh, if you have interest, yes, it's definitely helpful. But let me tell you, meteorology is not a part of your syllabus in first semester. First semester is more of geomorphology. And for that, I would say you attend to the link of Strahler that I have given, okay, the first section. You see that the book of Arthur Strahler on physical geography, the link for which I have I've uploaded it. Uh, yes, Mayuresh says, uh, and Akshata also says, uh, reference book, as I said, I've already posted a link in our group. And uh, that's the book on uh, PDF copy of uh, Arthur Strahler's physical geography. And uh, I've posted the link of the same. Now, it may, it, it may be so that uh, many of you all have... Uh, missed out that particular link so what i plan to do is uh, possibly today i will try to or any one of you who has been in the group from uh, the first day will surely have an access to that particular link so you can just share the link again as far as our groups are concerned for the benefit of uh, those students who have joined at a later point so that is how if it does not come of course i'm there i'll post it and i don't want you all to read through it wait just go through the diagrams, go, go through the tables, go through the pictures. That itself brings you so much of information of geography into, uh, uh, into you that uh, you will literally enjoy 
uh, reading it at a later point of time. I advise you all, you don't go into the details of it right away. Just look at the beautiful picture, one of the best, it's called as the Bible. I was meeting a very senior person the other day who was already retired. I was meeting him for the first day and he asked me, what do you do? I said, I'm, I'm a teacher at SP College. He said, oh, that's great. Uh, I am, uh, he is of course an officer in the government and he said that I had geography as my optional for competitive. And uh, uh, it's, it's, I, I remember a very fascinating book, uh, Physical Geography by Strahler. And uh, that it, it gives you the important from say 50, 50 years ago and even today, okay, the value of that book has hardly depleted. Okay? I, I again urge you, don't read through it, but go through the diagrams. Try to read the diagrams and try to understand and link it to what is now happening off late, what we are doing, the branches of geography and 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 uh, say, say the, the happenings, the processes in geography. Try to link it to that. By the way, I have a few more. Uh, comments and Mayuresh says I have 11 standard, 12 standard in CRT. Uh, I am not very sure. I've not gone into the details of the NCRT of 11th and 12th. Uh, but let me go through it. Even I have a copy of it. Of late, I have not gone into the details, and I don't want to give you vague answers. I'll check, and uh, I will let you know. Uh, NCRT books anyway are uh, helpful, and uh, that is. Um, uh, just give me some some time and I'll go into the details of 11th and 12th NCRT and let you know if FIBSC uh, could use that. But let me tell you that yes, NCRT is a good book, but there is a difference of understanding geography at 11th, 12th and undergraduate. You must have by now realized that we have a much more broader canvas on which we need to understand geography rather than just being informed about geography that one two three four features of the river one two three four features of the wind we're going to go into the details why it why do these features come up how do these features come up is all that we are going to uh, do that. then we have one more maitri patel says sir gc leong's physical geography yes excellent book gc leong's physical geography is a good book again i said it's a primary book Okay, we have to go beyond that. And for that, you have to attend lectures for undergraduate classes. Okay, we're going to go a couple of steps. If not one step, I would say at least a couple of steps beyond GC Leong, NCRT, and so on and so forth. Yes, they're going to be very good basic reference books. But now we are going to understand these subjects in a broader sense. That is what I want you to understand uh, very um, clearly, very clearly. Okay, so that's all for today. Tomorrow you may have your Roman geography uh, lecture, and of course, Professor Tigre will continue with that. If you have any questions, obviously you can come back and ask me in the WhatsApp group as well. I've of course opened it. The purpose I had closed it down to admins only yesterday was because the yeah, day before yesterday was because of the Sarah. Students are very interested to wish each other greetings, but as I said, our so our uh, group is supposed to be subject oriented and that is why I had to close it down. I have opened it up again. <clears throat> so any questions you have, we can come back and answer them as such. Okay. I would stop here today. Stay safe and uh, thank you for being with me.